So whatever you do, if you're out on your homestead, don't do this thing that I just did. It's caused me to lose something and I can't get it back. But let's get our chickens taken care of first before I tell you what I did. So for me to show you what I messed up, we need to get in the truck. Now, I only have eight acres, so why am I getting in the truck? I'll show you in a second. So we are over here on our other piece of property across our dry creek in what is our original orchard that we planted and added actually to some fruit trees that were already here. And it's dying. It's dying because we're in a drought, but it's dying for two reasons. Both of those reasons are me being lazy. Now let me talk about that. I talk a lot about mindset and things like that, but uh, you cannot be lazy either. And for me, I was lazy, I didn't want to go out much in the 100 degree heat, and it has cost me because these trees over here need water bad. And this is the only way for me to do it right now because, and that is because our water does not work here anymore. And that is because I was lazy in another regard. And that is I have not repaired the water line on the other property that runs over here after slicing it putting in the new septic lines. I just thought it was a project that could wait while I finished everything else, and it couldn't because now I don't have water over here for these trees and they are really struggling. And this is what happens when they struggle. This beautiful four-year-old pear right here, it is looking amazing, but it had about 50 pears on it. Can you see how many are on it right now? Zero. This pear tree right here, still looking great, but how many pears were on it? Only about 20, but how many do I have now? Zero. And this beautiful pear tree behind me, which was here on the property when we got here, it had probably two or 300 pears on it. Guess how many are on it now? That's right, zero. Now I did get a couple of pears from these trees before they dropped all of them. And that's one of the first things they do when they're in a drought situation is they drop their fruit. So I got one from this tree, one, and it was about this big. And I got six from the first tree that I showed you. Now I'm probably going to do a video on drought resistant fruits and veggies. And I'm gonna do that because we don't know what weather patterns are like. We haven't had a drought here in Texas in the summer since 2011, and that was pretty bad. And now 2022, 11 years later, it is rough. A lot of people are losing cattle, and uh, the only cattle that are doing well are the longhorns because they are bred for this type of weather. So I was lazy in not filling up buckets, bringing them over here and watering the trees. Now, I didn't water the plums because they don't produce for some reason, I haven't figured it out. They were here when I got here. But my pears produce a lot and one of my peach trees actually came back. It was dead before, but I didn't water them. I got lazy. I didn't bring the water over here, and that is something you cannot afford to do. You can't afford to do those things, and take my example. I've got no fruit now. So if we're in a situation where we are hungry, and you get a little bit lazy, and you don't do what you're supposed to do, then you're gonna go hungry for even longer and you're gonna jeopardize your family from that laziness. And I've done that and I'm not proud of it, um, but I'm learning and I'll learn for next time that I can't do that because a couple hundred pears cans a lot of pears and that will feed you for a decent amount of time. So pay attention to the things you gotta do, write them down in priority uh, on you know whatever piece of paper you gotta write them down on and do them. And don't think something isn't a priority if at that specific moment, like reconnecting the water line for me, if at that specific moment, it didn't matter. 
because we had a lot of rains, you know, over the last couple of years, after I put in the septic lines, I didn't think anything of it. I didn't think a drought was coming, but you need to prepare for things in the unknown. So here we are in a drought. I don't have water over here. So what a blessing. While I'm talking to you, I found another pair. Just one more. Maybe there's one or two more up there. I'm going to pick it right now so it doesn't fall off the tree. So I guess you could say that the deer got a great snack because there are no pears on the ground over here at all. They are all gone. So the little creatures and deer that run through here all the time were able to get some nutrition and they were able to get some water out of the fruit. So that's good because the wildlife is even struggling around here because there is no water. All the ponds are dried up, all the creeks are dried up, everything is dried up. I don't know where they're drinking. And so I guess things like this are a blessing for them. I'm gonna pour this out a little bit at a time so it just doesn't run off because it is so dry. I'm gonna soak a little bit of an area and hopefully that area will become saturated and it'll seep down deeper. So remember friends, do not do what we did. Do not be lazy with your chores. Now go check out this video right here, which shows you the exact method we used to plant these fruit trees. Have a beautiful blessed day and we will see you on the next video. Bye.